Hey gang, it is Stephanie with Peace of Mind Dog Training, and I wanted to share some good info with some of you guys right now. So some of you may be looking at this dog and thinking, wow, he just had a really good time. He's smiling and he just ran around the yard having a blast. Well, we do not just run around the yard. It is not hot. No one else is panting. This is a dog that is stressed. So you see that open mouth with the fast flicking tongue. You can see how the ears are pinned back, that lip licking, body shifting, the eyes are wide open and you can see the wrinkles down his eyes and cheeks from how wide and tight his mouth is open, um, how tightly those cheeks are pulled back. This is a dog that is stressed. He's stressed because of the storm. Many of you may see this dog and really want to pick him up and hold him to make him feel better, to soothe him. That is probably the last thing that we really want to do. Think about when you historically have shared affection with your dog previously. It's when your dog was doing something that you liked. So the history you've created with petting and affection is it's a reward for things you want to see repeated, for behaviors that you like. So if I shared affection with this dog right now, I'm actually going to be nurturing this fear and it will get worse. Same thing if I try to bring food in. Historically, when have you used food for your dog, for training, for rewards, because they're doing good things? So if I give food to this dog, historically food means I like what you're doing, keep doing it. That's not going to help me here. I can also create conflict with food where he starts to view food as a stressor. He really likes food, wanted to take food, but he was so stressed out and now the association is built. So what I'm doing instead is I have him on a place bed. He's not right on top of me. He cannot crawl up me. He is on a place bed. That is his job to do a down. If he gets up, he's corrected and put right back onto place. I'm not petting him, I'm not baby talking to him, I'm not giving him treats. I am letting him put this together himself. The storm isn't gonna kill you, thunder's not gonna kill you, so get it together, basically. <laughs> so what I'm gonna be looking for is eventually this heavy tongue that's out flicking fast like that will start to retract and slow down as he pants. So you can see it kind of going in a little bit here and there. I want to see these ears that are pinned back start to drop and relax at his side. I want to see those wrinkles that are starting to see how his jowls are starting to kind of drop. They're not pinned all the way back here. I want to see those start to relax. He's doing a little bit of now that slow um, blink right there instead of the wide eye that he's had. Those are things I want to see. What I'm really looking for is for that whole head and body to drop. So the panting stops, the ears relax, the eyes go really soft, ideally close, but that's going to take time. So fingers crossed this storm keeps on rolling through here so we can keep focusing on this work and he can find his relaxation. So again, hopefully storm keeps rolling and if it does, we get and when we get to the point, I will come back and show you what this can turn into. But this, my friends, is a very stressed dog. Let's help him get through it. So we're back real quick and he's decided to lay down, but you may notice some lip licking and some, every once in a while his little body just shakes. A little panting came back as he started hearing me talk. Um, but again, we're seeing those stress signals right but he's starting to settle in a bit to where his head was down he wasn't panting for a bit um, he started panting once he started hearing me talk now think about that he's used to having people soothe and talk to him while he's in panic mode um, i did that video i sat here and ignored him for about four minutes then talked to him and he settled but as soon as he heard that voice come back he started cycling back into stress so that calming voice that you think you're doing, that baby talk and soothing isn't really helping. So, but right now I want to also point out, he's starting to pant again. Hopefully he'll stop panting, 
but you'll see his little body start to vibrate every once in a while. It does a little bit of a shake. So again, that's something we see our dog and go, oh, he must be cold, give him a blanket or he's scared, let me hold him. He is releasing all of this stress and anxiety. Typically he'd be running around, he's panting, he's expelling that energy that way in other ways. But right now he has to hold us down, he can't leave, so he's starting to settle a bit, but all that energy in his body still has to be released. So that's when you're seeing those little pulse of, um, of vibrations when his body shakes. But this, again, may look sloppy right now, but it's a good sign that we are starting to get somewhere with relaxation. Um, I have a timer going at the end of all this. I'll let you know how much time it is. I haven't checked on it just yet. But we did a bit of a time lapse video from when I shut off from our first video to when this happened of him laying down and so we're back real quick and he's decided to lay down but you may notice some lip licking and some every once in a while his little body just shakes a little panting came back since he started hearing me talk um but again we're seeing those stress signals right but he's starting to settle in a bit to where his head was down he wasn't panting for a bit um, he started panting once he started hearing me talk. Now think about that. He's used to having people soothe and talk to him while he's in panic mode. Um, I did that video. I sat here and ignored him for about four minutes, didn't talk to him, and he settled. But as soon as he heard that voice come back, he started cycling back into stress. So that calming voice that you think you're doing, that baby talk and soothing, isn't really helping. So. But right now I want to also point out, and he's starting to pant again. Hopefully he'll stop panting, but you'll see his little body start to vibrate every once in a while. It does a little bit of a shake. So again, that's something we see our dog and go, oh, he must be cold, give him a blanket or he's scared, let me hold him. He is releasing all of this stress and anxiety. Typically he'd be running around, he's panting, he's expelling that energy that way in other ways but right now he has to hold us down he can't leave so he's starting to settle a bit but all that energy in his body still has to be released so that's when you're seeing those little pulse of, um, of vibrations when his body shakes but this again may look sloppy right now but it's a good sign that we are starting to get somewhere with relaxation um, I have a timer going at the end of all this. I'll let you know how much time it is. I haven't checked on it just yet. But we did a bit of a time lapse video from when I shut off from our first video to when this happened of him laying down and sort of getting to the beginning of relaxation. Um, and then I'll share also the timer to show in total how long it took. We still have rain, no thunder, but the storm is still active. Um, we'll show her how long the time took to get to this. So he is now snoring. Um, it takes a lot of energy to be that stressed. <laughs> but we stuck with it and he's now passed out and snoring. Now, granted, the storm has mostly passed. It is still raining, uh, but we don't have any thunder for the last, I don't know, for a little bit now. Um, but that's not to say that Elliot is done and healed. The next big thunder that we have for the next storm will start that cycle over. But I would do the exact same thing of putting him on place, holding him accountable if he gets off, and letting him go through that cycle. It will go faster and smoother each time as long as we stay consistent with how we are working with him. My goal is for him to be able to learn how to handle stress, cope with it to the point where it's no longer a stressor. So this is great progress. He's snoring away. Um, but again, it's not to say that tonight when the storm comes back or if we have another storm um, come through here sooner, 
that he won't cycle over again. He will. And we're just going to help him through it.